Hi there, and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. If you're new to the channel, then I go through lots of different videos to cover A-Level Biology in this series. If you are new, then click to subscribe to keep up to date on all the latest videos. And if you like this video and find it helpful, then click the thumbs up at the bottom for a like. This video is going to be on DNA and chromosomes, comparing the DNA found in eukaryotic cells to prokaryotic cells. And if you follow the AQA course, this is the beginning of topic four. There's quite a lot of questions in this particular video, so I would recommend getting yourself some paper and a pen so you can pause the videos when I suggest, have a go at the questions, and then go through the word examples with me. So we can actually start straight off then with some questions to see what you can remember from GCSE. So definitions for gene and allele. For chromosomes, not so much a definition, more um, a description, or you might want to do a diagram to demonstrate what a chromosome is. So pause at this stage, and when you've had a go, carry on in the video. So first of all then, gene, and we're going to go through these one at a time. A gene is a short section of DNA, and that short section codes for a polypeptide and a functional RNA. Now, this is different to the GCSE definition, where it was fine to just say it codes for a characteristic. But in reality, that's far too vague, which is why the A-level definition, you would have to say it's a section of DNA that codes for a polypeptide and a functional RNA. Now, if you haven't already covered the proteins to know what a polypeptide chain is, um, I'll link at the top here so you can click and review your protein knowledge. So the polypeptide chains, that is the primary structure of a protein. That will then be folded, coiled, held together by hydrogen ionic disulfide bonds to make a functional protein. So that is why at GCSE, the definition was that a gene is a short section which codes for um, a protein or a characteristic. It actually just codes for the polypeptide chain and then that gets further processed in the Golgi apparatus. So this diagram here is showing us a chromosome made up of tightly coiled DNA and just a small section of that DNA is a gene. Now over here, this is actually linking to a new definition that you'll need to add to your notes. And that is the definition locus. And locus means location. So locus, location. And it's the location of where you find a gene. So for each species, so let's say human species, for example, all humans have exactly the same genes. We have different versions of those genes though, which is why we're not all genetically identical, but we do all have the same genes. So we have a gene for hair color, eye color, blood group, um, but you have different versions. The gene is always found in exactly the same location on the same chromosome for every person. And that location is called the locus. Now in this example that I've done here, it's not about humans, it's to do with a particular plant. So we've got a pair of chromosomes, so a homologous pair, a term we'll come to shortly. And the gene that codes for the flower colour is in exactly the same position on both chromosomes, and that would be the locus for flower colour. They have different versions though, and that leads us on to our second definition, which is allele. So an allele is a different form of the same gene. So you might say it's a different version, an alternative form. What we mean by that is individuals have exactly the same genes. So a gene to code for a particular polypeptide, but you might have a slightly different base sequence or version of that gene. And that results in a different protein being created, a slightly different protein. So in this example, again, it's from plants. We've got the gene for height, and we're shown the locus of that gene. In this case, on these two chromosomes, there is the same allele, so the same version, the gene which will code for a polypeptide, which will result in a taller height. For the P gene, and this is a description of the external surface, they could either be a smooth P or a wrinkled surface P. So those are our two alleles. 
and the chromosome from parent two has the allele which will code for a smooth surface whereas parent one has the allele which will code for a wrinkled surface so that's what we mean by allele so lastly we have the chromosomes so chromosomes that is how dna is stored so a chromosome is tightly coiled up dna and in eukaryotic cells chromosomes are located in the nucleus and humans in our somatic cells which means the body cells so not the gametes the sperm or the egg um, in our body cells we have 23 pairs of chromosomes so in total there will be 46 chromosomes in each of our body nuclei and at this point, I just want to go through some confusion that can occur with what a chromosome looks like. So both of these diagrams are chromosomes. The chromosome on the left is what chromosomes look like when the cell isn't undergoing cell division. So when the cell isn't going through mitosis, um, isn't going through interphase before that, you just have a single thread-like or stick-like structure, and that is our chromosome. It still has a centromere band in the middle. This here on the right is also a chromosome. The difference being this is a chromosome after DNA replication has occurred in interphase of the cell cycle. So it's still exactly the same chromosome, it's just we now have double the quantity. So we've got two copies of that chromosome. It's held together in the middle by a centromere. Um, but one of these arms we would call a chromatid. And during mitosis or meiosis, the centromere will split and the two chromatids are separated back into a chromosome which looks like an individual stick. So chromosomes are single sticks when the cells are not undergoing division. When chromosomes are doubled before cell division, this is what they look like. But for some reason, the media have really taken hold of the image on the right and show chromosomes looking as an X structure. But that is actually only after a chromosome has replicated. So the next thing about chromosomes is this idea of homologous pairs, which I mentioned earlier. So pairs of matching chromosomes are homologous pairs. So for example, the two copies of chromosome one are homologous pairs. So a homologous pair is when you have a chromosome which has exactly the same genes as another chromosome. They might have different versions, they might have different alleles, but they have identical genes. And this occurs from when fertilization happens. So when the sperm and the egg fuse, the DNA from those two cells combine and the sperm will contribute one chromosome and the egg contributes the other chromosome. And that's how humans end up with 23 pairs, yet the sperm and the egg only contain 23. But combine them, you have 46. So homologous pair, if you were asked to define that in the exam, the mark would be this bottom bit here. So it's a pair of chromosomes which have exactly the same genes. That is what a homologous pair of chromosomes are. And just to show you that, we've got the 23 pairs of chromosomes that you'd find in a human body cell. We call this picture a human karyotype. So that is when you have an image of all of the chromosomes um, organized in their pairs. So we can see that they are the same size and the dark colored bands and the light colored bands are in the same position. And that's showing us that they do contain exactly the same genes. So we've got all of these homologous pairs numbered, except for the very final, the 23rd pair isn't numbered. We've got here X and Y. And that's because the 23rd pair are the sex chromosomes. So they will determine biologically whether you are male or female. So in this human karyotype, um, the chromosomes are X and Y. So biologically, this individual would be a male because males have a Y chromosome. So how is all of this DNA stored then? Because there's a lot of DNA that has to fit into every single cell. So we said in eukaryotic cells, the DNA is stored in the nucleus. The chromosomes are linear in shape. So you either have just a single stick-like structure 
or again, we see this double structure, that X-like shape. This would be just before um, mitosis or meiosis was about to occur. The way all of that DNA fits in though, is a chromosome is made up of tightly, tightly coiled DNA. And to help make sure that, that DNA doesn't get tangled, if you imagine trying to pack away your Christmas lights on your Christmas tree, Often they just get shoved into the box. Next year you try and take them out and they're all tangled up. So what helps DNA not get tangled is it's wrapped around a structure. And those structures are called histone proteins. So the DNA gets wrapped around these histone proteins. So when it's tightly coiled, it should make it less likely that the DNA gets tangled up. And this image here where it says nucleosomes, that is what we call the complex where you do have DNA wrapped around a histone protein. So that's what these two paragraphs just here are um, describing. So the histone is the name of the protein. DNA is wrapping around that histone to create nucleosomes. So that's how the DNA is stored in a eukaryotic cell. In comparison, in prokaryotic cells, the DNA is still as a chromosome, but it is much shorter, so you have much less DNA. And instead of it being a linear stick-like structure, it is circular. So those are two key differences. The DNA is much shorter and it is circular instead of linear in structure. Secondly, because it's much shorter, it's not wrapped around histone proteins. So it's not protein bound or it's not associated with proteins. The DNA does not wrap around the histones. Instead, it just super coils to fit into the cell. And there's no nucleus in a prokaryotic cell. So it's not within the nucleus. It's just free within the cytoplasm. So the last thing here is two organelles which are in eukaryotic cells, the mitochondria and the chloroplast. And these two organelles contain their own DNA. That's because both of these organelles have essential reactions. So resp aerobic respiration in mitochondria and photosynthesis in the chloroplast. And that DNA is to code for enzymes which are essential for those reactions. What you need to know on the spec though is how the DNA in these two organelles is similar to the DNA in prokaryotic DNA or prokaryotic cells. So the similarities are the DNA is much shorter, much like in prokaryotic cells. It's circular like prokaryotic cells. Um, it's not histone bound either. So this DNA that you find inside of the mitochondria and chloroplasts doesn't resemble typical eukaryotic cell DNA. In fact, it's very, very similar to prokaryotic DNA. So at this stage, we're going to go through some questions to check your understanding of that theory, but also to introduce some math skills so you can start to see some of the basic math style questions that you could be asked. So pause the video. I'd say spend maybe about five minutes on these questions. And when you're ready, press play to go through the answers with me. So question one, explain how the considerable length of DNA molecule is compacted into the chromosome. So this is for the eukaryotic cells. So the double helix gets tightly, tightly coiled around the histone proteins to make that nucleosome complex. And then it, that is what forms the chromosome. Question two is quite similar. Um, what's the function of a histone protein? So those proteins associate with the DNA to assist in that tightly coiling. So the histone protein is there for the DNA to wrap around so it can tightly coil, fit into the nucleus um, as part of the chromosome. Then we get to the maths questions. So we're told that um, in this example, the DNA in one human muscle cell is 2.3 meters in length. If all the DNA were distributed equally between the chromosomes, calculate the mean length of DNA in each one. So we know the length is 2.3 meters. You have 46 chromosomes in a muscle cell. So 2.3 divided by 46 is 0.05 meters. 
Part B, we're asked to calculate in millimetres the length of DNA in a human brain cell. So the first part of this question was actually testing, do you know that in every body cell you have exactly the same DNA? So if you have 2.3 metres of DNA in a muscle cell, you're going to have exactly the same DNA in a brain cell. So it will also be 2.3 metres of DNA in a brain cell. So all we had to do for this question was work that out and then convert the metres into millimetres. So that would be times a thousand. So 2.3 times a thousand is 2,300 millimetres. I'm just going to link up here a video on microscopes because in that video there is a section there about how to convert different units. So if you weren't clear on the conversion part, click the video, just have a recap on that. There's a timestamp on that video as well to let you know exactly at what point in the video that is occurring. So the last question, the human genome contains approximately 3 billion base pairs which resides in the 23 pairs of chromosomes within the nucleus of all our cells. If all the base pairs were equally distributed between the chromosomes, calculate how many base pairs each chromosome would have, and you have to give your answer in standard form. So first of all, 3 billion is 3 times 10 to the 9. If we have 23 pairs of chromosomes, that means we have 46 in total. We're told to assume that it is equally distributed between the chromosomes. So 3 times 10 to the 9 divided by 46, and that comes to 6.5 times 10 to the 7 for our standard form. So that's it for our introduction to topic 4, DNA and chromosomes. Just as a recap then, genes are sections of DNA which code for polypeptides and functional RNA. Alleles are alternative forms of a gene. Humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes, and we call those pairs homologous. And homologous pairs means that it's two chromosomes with exactly the same genes. In eukaryotic cells, the DNA is stored in chromosomes, and the DNA tightly coils around histone proteins, um, and it's linear in shape. Prokaryotic DNA is coiled and stored as chromosomes still, but it's not going to be associated with proteins. There's no histones. They're much shorter and they are circular in shape. Lastly, there is DNA found inside of the two organelles, chloroplasts and mitochondria, and that DNA is very similar to prokaryotic DNA because it's also short and circular. So that's it for the DNA and chromosomes. If you want to try some practice questions to test your knowledge on this, then go along to MissEstrick.com. I'll put a link for exactly where you can find those questions in the description box um, for this video so you can find those. And if you haven't subscribed already, click the subscription logo just here to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And if you've enjoyed today's video and found it helpful, then please click the thumbs up at the bottom.